you want to put your best foot forward. You know, you don't want to post just all your junk out there, but it needs to be like your actual foot. One of the main examples that really like spurred this conversation up was I was doing a live stream review and the intro for this church was just epic. It was like all these huge drone shots of the church, crane shots through this enormous crowd and just tons of people. And then it opened to the guy leading worship. And it was just a dude with an acoustic guitar on this tiny stage. And I said, is this the same church? What's happening here? And the guy in the comments was like, oh, my pastor just really likes that intro video from that other church. And so we use it as our intro to our service. <laughs> I was like, no, you can't like that. That's so confusing to someone that's checking out your church. Rylan Russell, welcome to the Church Front Podcast. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me on. Love the pod. Glad to have you, man. Uh, Rylan, you are going to be one of our speakers at the Church Front Live Gathering 2023 coming up in October in Littleton, Colorado. So we wanted to get a chance to have our audience get to know you, get to kind of hear a little bit about what you do. And so why don't you introduce yourself, tell our listeners who you are, what you do, and what you're up to these days. Yeah. Well, I'm super humbled to get to be a part of the church front conference. Like when that, when Jake asked me about doing this, I was like, wow, me? Like, really? I'm just, I'm just a dude from Owasso, Oklahoma, who's, I'm a full-time worship and media arts pastor at a church here. Our church is Central Baptist Church Central, representing, you know, uh, we run maybe 450 on a Sunday. And, uh, you know, I've been at this church now for almost 13 years. And um, along the way, I've made a lot of mistakes. And now I'm kind of documenting my journey over on my YouTube channel, which is kind of, you know, we're all connected in this YouTube world now, which is awesome to get to kind of talk to other guys who are all, we're all doing the same thing, just in different places all over the globe. And so we can like iron sharpen iron kind of thing and make ourselves the best that we can all for God's glory. So that's where, that's where I'm at in my life right now. I've got three kids and uh, we're in the middle of a, a house move and Easter's around the corner. So it's mass chaos, but it's it's a beautiful chaos is what I like to say around here at the church. It's, it's all things that I love. It's just craziness. <laughs> so wait a second. I invited you to Church Front Live because I thought you got a Dove Award last year. Or maybe, you, you co maybe it was that you collabed with... Um, Brian Johnson and, and uh, Jason Ingram on a couple songs or what was that? Wait, you yeah, saw me you know, do any of that? I, I, you know, I'm just so humble that I told him to leave me off the credits, guys. I'm doing fine here. The okay. church takes great care of me. Um, yeah. I'm going to sell one to Tomlin next year, actually, that we're working on right now. No, so. just just to kind of poke fun and not not poke fun at them, <laughs> but just like the reason we do Church Run Live and kind of how we spec, how we how we pick our keynote speakers, break shot, or, uh, breakout um, workshop speakers. It's very much like pragmatically who can deliver a lot of value to the attenders along the topics of things that we're, we care about week in and week out in worship ministry, um, where it tends to be a lot of worship -y conferences out there are, are much more like, hey, let's just get some great artists here. It's awesome. My personal preference for a conference is to come and learn new ideas not to have a five hour long worship worth of worship sessions uh, throughout the day, even though that can kind of be cool to an extent. So just wanted to give my own little personal uh, opinion on just the state of worship conferences and, and why we've designed our church front conference the way it is. Plus it's actually just one big uh, family get together for the church front community and also the um, uh, people who are in our program. But my favorite part, especially is when, I kind of like when people are introduced to someone they may have not ever heard of before at all, but they're like, oh my gosh, I need to follow this person. So of course, Rylan being a fellow YouTuber, uh, him and I have a lot in common. I'm just an, I'm just a nobody as well from, from Colorado and Florida. But, but if you put out helpful content, it's people, people are going to watch it and listen to it and benefit from it. Yep. Yeah, it's been the thing that's blown me away for sure. Just doing YouTube and social media, the, the the power that it has is almost a little scary to me that I've realized now is like people are actually like doing these things that I'm suggesting. So I need to be kind of careful <laughs> what I'm saying, because uh, yes, there's some guys that have like <laughs> literally someone just did that to me, like DM to me. I did like a, a Instagram short about, hey, look at this cool setup of using Logic Pro with Waves. And then I see in our church run Facebook group, someone asking like, hey, and I'm like trying to set this up like right now. And I'm like, wait a second, like you, 
just because I'm putting these short form content out there, whatever it is, doesn't mean you have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Or do it impulsively. You can think through it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. To- good, totally, seg- totally. good segue though, to kind of what we want to chat with uh, Rylan about today in, in the sense that we, we saw this, uh, this great YouTube video that Rylan put out. It had to be a couple months back now. It's been, I don't know how long ago, but it's, it's not super recent, but it was all about, I think the title was church catfishing, right? Rylan, you mm-hmm. want to tell us about like the, maybe the, a brief premise of that video. Sure, man. Well, this this ties in perfectly that we're talking about this, but uh, because of what I'm going through in my life right now, which is selling a house, because I just photographed and did a full video on my house, and I felt like such a criminal because it looked amazing in the photos, you know? (laughs) And so that's just kind of part of the deal. But uh, the, the premise of this vlog really came about from me doing live stream reviews. Over on my channel, that's kind of part of what we do every few weeks is we do lots of live stream reviews. So I've like reviewed thousands of them now, I feel like. And there's just certain times where I've realized like, your online presence is probably not matching your in person experience. And we'll talk about the second way that it's it's reversed later on. But what I've seen so many guys do and what I have been guilty of at my church is people would walk through our doors after checking out our church online and almost be like, wait, is, is this the same church? Because like our lobbies were just super dated. They would come in at that time. We were having a traditional service first and then a contemporary service second. And they would accidentally come to our traditional service. And they're like, wait, what? Is this the right central? You know, <laughs> and so you know, our online presence was kind of catfishing people because we were making it look so great and well put together and the space looked huge. And and so it's just something that uh I thought I'd make a little fun vlog about, and it's just a fun concept to talk about because I think we are a little guilty of it as churches. Yeah, it's tempting, and I think the the ease of making it look like something that's not. I mean, you can put a color filter and a wide angle lens on. I mean, I'm thinking about the real estate photos, and it's like every real estate photographer I've ever met has been like, well, I just shoot with this really specific lens in this part of the room, and it makes the room look huge. Then you get to the room when you're touring the house, and it's like just a normal size space and so we do we do have the opportunity to do that with our our church services pretty easily and and sometimes it can be to our detriment what are some of the primary ways that you see maybe an initial thought of like one of the ways that people are maybe misleading catfishing is a term we can use through this conversation but um misrepresenting maybe what's the, one of the ones that sticks out to you primarily yeah man well i i always say we were like the guy that was on zoom dressed to the nines, like from here up and then below the waist, we were still just like in our underwear. And so people would come and they'd be a little confused. Right. Um, but one of the main examples that really like spurred this conversation up was I was doing a live stream review and the intro for this church was just epic. It was like all these huge drone shots of the church and just like crane shots through this enormous crowd and just tons of people. And then it opened to the guy leading worship. And it was just a dude with an acoustic guitar on this tiny stage. And I said, wait, so like, is this the same church? What's happening here? And the guy in the comments was like, oh, my pastor just really likes that intro video from that other church. And so we use it as our intro to our service. (laughs) I was like, no, you can't like, that's so confusing to someone that's checking out your church. And that's what our live streams are. Is there also kind of illegal. (laughs) It's also illegal. (laughs) I'm assuming they didn't pay any usage rights for that video. (laughs) Churches don't have to do things legally, Jake, settle down. (laughs) uh, Just be clear. None of the opinions and thoughts expressed by Rowling on this podcast express the views of church run LLC. Just a, just a disclaimer. Easy legal formality. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, just to be sure. So I I actually, so I, I'm not up to the times. I'm not sure if this is like a Gen Z term or something, but catfishing, or maybe it's, maybe it's too much of a Gen X term. Maybe, maybe we're, we're too old or something. Who knows? But for people to understand, we're not, it's not, it's not like a, well, I guess it's kind of a metaphor for catching catfish, but the, the, what I found on Google, the process of luring someone into a relationship by means of fictional online persona. Ooh. So I didn't, I never heard that clear of a definition for the, the term. I kind of got what you mean, but I was like, oh, there's an actual term for that. So that's, that's good to know. 
Yeah, it goes all the way back to Neve with the show on, you know, actual catfish that was just so huge, you know, people creating this online persona and then you meet them in person. And it's like things are not matching what you posted online. And so some other ways that I've seen churches do this that maybe we've actually been guilty of at times that I've had to have to check myself on is, you know, being a maybe your church is really multi-generational and you have all kinds of different people, but you're really particular about what type of people you're posting on your social medias. They're all young and beautiful and racially diverse when you really only have like two people of color in your church. And that's our church. Like we, that's just not the city that we live in and the culture that we're serving. And so, but it's tempting to feel like that's what you need to put forward on your, your branding, your social media stuff, or maybe even like using stock photos of beautiful people that have no association with your church, <laughs> you know, definitely don't or do they that. Or the, they use the unsplash worship <laughs> images for their like <laughs> landing page of worship time. Like I see how many times have I, I mean, I've used those images for church front stuff before, but how many times have I seen those same unsplash images on church websites? <laughs> I know that hand. I know that hand. <laughs> yeah. We actually had someone visiting once uh, from, they were a missionary in like Germany and they were at our church and I used this video that I got somewhere for a song that was up behind us. And afterwards they came up and told me that actually one of the photos that was in that video was of their daughter that was on Unsplash. And so <laughs> it's just, you know, it's funny how small the digital footprint of worship world can be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even more than that, it's like, Maybe you're fudging the attendance numbers. I know ministerially speaking can be used a lot. Like, yeah, we're a church of 450 when really Sunday to Sunday, you're only running 300. And like you said earlier, Luke, like you're using a wide angle lens to make the room look really big, or maybe you're not showing that one part of your church that's, you know, not up to par. And I, I like to say it like this, like you want to put your best foot forward. You know, you don't want to post just all your junk out there, but it needs to be like your actual foot that you own. Like <laughs> it can't just be this fictional thing that you're creating. And obviously that guy using that intro is, is an extreme example. But for me, it really comes down to in my own life, like a pride thing, I think, because we want our churches to look really good to someone that's that first impression, right? That's the front door of our church is our live streams. And so we want it to be great, but at what cost? And so, I think the danger there is like the world that we're trying to reach is already so skeptical of the church already. And if they find out that we're not being our authentic selves, that's just going to breed more skepticism and distrust with the church, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's going to uh, really make your church church trust you more is if you hire Carl Lentz as a pastor. <laughs> Dude, isn't that Ooh. happening? Is uh, yeah. we don't have to go down a rabbit rabbit trail. Is it? Are, are you near Tulsa? Near Transformation? Yeah, we're about mm. twenty minutes from Transformation. Okay. I'm supposed to go down and visit with those guys hopefully mm -hmm. next month and just check it out and go behind the scenes because it's. I mean, it's an amazing space that they've put together, and there was all totally. kinds of controversy even there. I'm pretty sure with like building regulations and sound stuff, and you know, it's yeah. in this neighborhood. And, so, yeah. but they're doing amazing they stuff. Like, but yeah, they stuff took like over like happens. arena. It was like a whole, it was like a, a local arena, right? For a sports stadium there or something. I was chatting with Chad Vegas, uh, the video director, but it's just funny. I, we don't even have to dive into it, but I just, that was on the, the, uh, the latest current thing in the church scandal world was them hiring Carl Lentz. So, uh, listen, hey, listen, Google, Christians love Google to be it. outraged about somebody else's outrage to their outrage. Like we'll find something to be mad about, whether it's, you know, worship True. leader branding or Carl Lenz. Let me ask you guys a question and maybe you guys can speak into this. So as we think about like this, like catfishing idea, Easter is next Sunday for us right now. And, you know, people kind of throw out that, that thought of like, every Sunday should be like Easter Sunday to you. Don't do anything special because, you know, like when people come back the next Sunday, and it's not as great as it was on Easter, you know, then you're kind of catfishing people a little bit. You're, you're creating this facade of what you are, what you want to be, but then week to week, you're not that like, what do you think about that? Cause I kind of go back and forth. I want Easter to be special, but I don't know. What are y'all's thoughts? Yeah, I think it's definitely worth marking Easter like as a significant, because it is a significant historical event 
in the life of the church. So I think it's it's worth it standing out, um, at least from my perspective. You know, I think it's in the life of the body of Christ, it is worth mentioning that this is a different Sunday. Like this is not just ordinary time in the church calendar. It's not, you know, this is Resurrection Sunday and it's what the whole, you know, belief of the gospel is built upon. So if you're a believer in Christ, like without this Sunday specifically, your faith is pretty much null and void. And so there, you know, this has to be noticed, recognized, kind of made much of in in some sense the thing I kind of get distracted by, or maybe I think twice about is, you know, like churches, I think tend to do a lot of extra stuff um, on the front end or back end of the services, whether it be like a, a lobby decoration or a cool bumper or, you know, a, a new song or an opener or something like that. And, and I'm just wondering, like, I, I don't know that I've ever had a conversation with somebody who said that that's why they came back. You know, like they, mm-hmm. oh man, the the photo booth in your lobby with all the nice flowers and stuff, that just really made me feel at home. And that's why I came back because I just loved what you guys did with that. I, I really feel like the message of the gospel stands on its own most of the time. And so, you know, doing those extra things are not is not bad in and of themselves, but, you know, creating this kind of facade. And I know I've actually talked to a couple of churches that are like, well, it's the comeback Sunday that we really have to focus on. So Easter needs to be big, and then the following Sunday actually needs to be even more so that people kind of feel like, okay, I have a reason to return, and then the next Sunday is still that much, like, it's still awesome, you know? So I don't know, It's but I just feel like the gospel, the message just stands stands pretty sufficient on its own, but um, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts it's on so that, It's so funny, Jake? the weird little narratives that church leaders tell themselves about how things have to be a certain way. Um, I, I'm actually, I've been kind of church shopping uh, the past couple weeks around here in Florida. We were at a church for a year. Uh, long story short, it just became clear that wasn't the place for our family. Uh, we actually, one of the big things for us is like just finding a church that's like super close to our neighborhood. And uh, instead we were driving like 25 minutes, 30 minutes to the other church we were at. And like, that just gets old. South Fellowship Church in Colorado is like less than 10 minutes away. And um, so we were going to this little church that's like, I don't know, a mile away from us here. And it's a actually younger church plant that they um, ended up, they're actually buying the building that they're meeting in. It was an older church that was dying. They were able to basically buy the building from them. And it is literally the complete opposite of everything I care about church front wise when it comes to worship and production, like quality and excellence. Um, actually, I know that like their heart is there. They want it to be good. Like I can just tell. And honestly, like this is like literally just me attending like anybody else after two or two or three times at this church. I haven't had any extensive conversations about uh, who my um, undercover identity is as Jake, Jake with church front, but really just like, I just want to find a church for my family. And as time goes on, if I can help them, great, I will. Uh, but right now, just based on the last church experience, I'm, I'm uh, really taking my time before I dive all in, uh, in that capacity. And while I'm doing that, I'm like, you know what, as an ordinary Joe of a dad of a young family in this little town, like, I have such low expectations for that stuff for the church. And I think a lot of people do actually have pretty, pretty low expectations about these things. That's not an excuse to do them poorly. Like you can still do them as, as well as you can. And to me, I always like helping churches draw out that potential. Like, Hey, like you could do these things better. It's probably going to lead to a lot of unforeseen benefits that you're not even aware of that could be there. Um, but for the most part, like I'm speaking as a dad and a young family, a husband, I just want a good church that my kids can participate in worship in. That's an important one. Like I don't like out putting the kids into children's church. We we do the kids in worship, then we put them in the, the kids' church for the sermon. Uh, and then having a sermon based on scripture, what a novel concept these days. You know, it's just like get those basics right. And then like from there you can make make things like, you know, fancy or whatever. Like you just get the basics right. Like the 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 and then, and then, and then you can worry about like the quality and stuff, but then, but then still be accurate, right? Like people still, when they're like looking for churches, you could still put across the vibe online that like, Hey, we we're a small little community church in this neighborhood. 
and we care about good audio and video. Like that's it. Like it's not like trying to be all, you could still bring across that vibe without being over the top flashy. Before we continue on with the video, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, the Church Front Live Conference. It's a two-day conference with keynotes in breakout sessions on topics like worship tech, worship theology, musicianship, and leadership. It is a great way to network with other like-minded ministry leaders in the Church Front community. The sooner you purchase your Church Front Live tickets, the greater the discount you will get with the early bird discount code. So head on over to churchfrontlive.com, use that early bird discount code at checkout, and I look forward to seeing you at the conference. Now let's get back to the video. Well, and I, I wonder if some of that's like you're living and breathing and eating this world that we're living in with church tech stuff every day. And so maybe that's refreshing to you to kind of keep those core values and then find a church that fits that. But I was thinking about Easter like that because there was a while for on our, we on our website, we had like the Easter crowd photos as like one of our backdrops because, you know, it's so full on Easter. Yep. And so I think churches do that. But for us, I've been thinking through that. We are doing a giant opener this year. And where I've kind of landed for us with Easter is like, I don't care as much about, it's not about impressing the Christers, the, the Christmas and Easter crowd. It's about sell, like offering a celebratory moment for our church that is here week in and week out. Like, Easter is a moment like we should be able to get to celebrate and, yeah. you know, and so, yeah, I'm keeping in mind some of those people that maybe you're de church or coming back for the first time and all that. But uh, at the same time, like I want Christmas and Easter to be special for my kids who are here way too much <laughs> at our church, you know, and to be these moments. So, you know, there's not a right or a wrong, I think necessarily, but uh, keeping it authentic to you is probably really important. There was this one time our pastor talked about, have y'all ever heard of Propaganda City? Mm -mm -mm. So I guess in North Korea, I hadn't heard of it either. They actually have built a fake city at the border between South Korea and North Korea. It has full buildings and, and you know, high rises and apartment complexes and all this stuff that from a distance, it looks like it's like, look at the life we're living. It's amazing. But if you zoom in, it's actually abandoned and there's nobody that's there. It's just mm. a propaganda thing that they've Whoa. created. Wait, and are you telling me, are you, wait, wait a second. Are you telling me that world governments are not honest about things and they're trying to deceive us into thinking the current state of things is fine when it's probably not? I'm not going to make <laughs> sweeping statements like that, but uh, come to your own <laughs> conclusions on that. <laughs> but it makes me think like, how, how true can that be of our churches that from the exterior of our buildings or from the online front door, we're creating this image and then not living up to that whenever people walk through the door. Now, I think that what was interesting to me when I posted this vlog was that so many people commented and said, we are reverse catfishing everyone, that our online presence doesn't match up with our in-person because it's so bad online and in person is actually really good. And that's probably something for us to consider as well. Like, you know, cause that's, that's our first impression. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I would actually say is our, the church that I just started going to where it's like it, you know, online, it, it looks, the video quality looks bad. If audio is distorted, it's not clear. Like, a lot of it's just basic stuff. Like I could probably just walk over to the mixing console, turn a few knobs and be like, boom. Okay. Now your audio is like way better with even like, I think an analog console. Um, but when you're in the room, you really do feel like, man, this is a really strong community. And like, you know, it's a, the music that everybody's passionate, really into it. Like, this is great. It is that reverse catfish. I guess, yeah. I guess church front kind of exists to like help and we all exist here, like to, to help revert, like to, to undo that reverse catfish effect. Um, yeah. cause that is kind of what, from a marketing standpoint, if there's people who should be coming to your church and trying it out for the first time, like, yeah, that's, that's something you don't want to be a hindrance there of like mm -hmm. being like, Oh, they'll just move on or not take it seriously. Um, but at the same time, yeah. I'll say maybe they aren't taking it that seriously anyway. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to, to me, the best thing for your church to do is to be your church and accurately portray that online and in person. And that's great because there are going to be people who want to go to your church specifically because you are not uh, a 10,000 person church with a Instagram celebrity for a pastor. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's like, yeah, there's all this cool stuff there. Like, OK, that's great. That works for that branch of the church or that group of people who need that. But like there's also it's not, it doesn't work for everybody within your Tulsa area in Oklahoma. 
Yeah. Yeah. What I was going to say was that there are these mega churches all around us, right? And so that we start feeling like, man, there's maybe not enough people to reach, but we just realized there's 18,000 families within a 10 minute drive that don't go to church at all. They're either de-churched or not believers. There's plenty to go around. And mm -hmm. so sometimes we'll even have conversations about like, well, wait, your kid's camp is on the same week as our kid's camp. And so like, should we spread that out? And it's like, there's plenty of lost people for us to reach. And God's created all of our churches uniquely and placed the certain people in the body to, you know, make us and make us up the way that, you know, he wants us to be that are going to reach people that the other church, that life church is just around the corner. It's going to reach people we can't. And, so, and that's okay. We just have to be ourselves. Yeah. Do you think, uh, do you think that that is kind of that pride or that kind of competition mentality is, I think that really is probably the stem of the catfishing mentality on, on broadcast, right? It's, it's trying to look like something that you're not because you, you think like, well, I'm, it's a, it's almost like a lack of unity in the churches in the area uh, because you you are competing for that's such a I feel gross saying it, but you're competing for the the lost people to come to your church. And so you're trying to make this, you know, image or, you know, experience online that makes you more attractive than the other one. Whereas if we had more of that open handed mentality of, man, if you go to the church down the street, praise the Lord, like you get you're going to hear the gospel. You're, we pray that you get saved just like we would if you were in our in our front doors. Like the posture is the same whether you're at our church or another, you know, gospel believing church. And so that can be, I mean, if we had that kind of posture, humility, open handedness, you know, linking arms, I feel like that would help us um, in that aim of authenticity as we as we pursue online as well. Yeah, absolutely. One of the best received videos I ever made for our church was an Easter ad where I went and filmed myself in front of every church saying the same exact thing, inviting people to just attend an Easter service this weekend. Like there's 26 churches that are offering great biblical services this Sunday. You have no excuse. Just pick one and go to it. And it was funny, even while I was filming that kind of the there would be people come out from those churches and be like, well, hold on. What are you doing? Which I get it. Like there's somebody with a camera out there on, in their front you know, yard. But uh, once I talked about it and and what the goal was, man, people just really resonated with that because we do fall into that competition trap so easily. And people talk about like the homogenization of worship and just of the church nowadays, because we have access to what everyone else is doing at all times. And so we kind of end up just kind of being vanilla all the same. I don't really buy that though, because growing up, like every first Baptist church I went to was the exact same experience, whether it was in Podunk, Oklahoma, or in Tulsa. Like it may have just been scaled differently, but everybody had the Baptist hymnals and the offering envelopes with the check boxes and the board with the attendance numbers. Like I don't know that that's anything new. We all are copying each other because when something works, you know, why not? Why shouldn't I try that? If that's working for you guys, maybe it will work for me. So I don't know that there's anything wrong with that. I think the line is just like whenever you're you're putting something else out there that's actually not happening at your church. And I agree, Luke, it's it comes down to that competition thing a lot of times and just trying to put our foot forward that we don't even we don't even have that foot to begin with. <laughs> that's good. That's good. A uh, follow-up question to kind of where we're at. What's what's maybe something that you guys are doing right now, your church round, that you feel like is um, maybe being a weird way to ask this question, but like really being transparent to who you guys are. Like what's one example of a way online that you guys are doing your online services that you feel like this is just us kind of as we are. We're not, you know, sugarcoating anything. This is just our people. You know, any, any examples that maybe listeners could take with them as we've, we've kind of chatted around the, the catfishing idea, um, maybe some practical examples of like, well, okay, how can I take some steps in authenticity and representing our congregation as is, whether it be from the poor um, or lower quality going up in quality to represent what in-person is actually like or vice versa? Sure. Well, I think that post COVID, we felt like maybe we needed to keep our production value a little bit higher for different segments in our live stream, doing some more pre recorded stuff for intros and outros and things like that. And for us, we've moved to doing all of that live in the room. And so it's more off the cuff and more personable because you're trying to connect with people actually sitting there or watching online. 
And uh, that's, I think, been helpful to kind of have a less produced moment in the service. Um, other things that we've done in the past is maybe having some different Q&A times with our pastor uh, that's more just off the cuff and you can actually ask questions. Um, I think for us, something else we're going to move towards, we haven't yet, is our moderator that's always chatted with people in the in the service has just been like Central Baptist Church and not been a person behind the, the brand. Mm. And I think that that can bring that wall down if maybe it was like, hey, this is you know, Amber, and I'm, I'm your host today online. Let me know if you have any prayer requests, just things like that, where it's it's a little more personable and it's less produced feeling. You don't take uh, photos and bumper videos from other churches and use them on yours. <laughs> that that kind of helps. <laughs> yeah, that helps. I, I will say this. One other way that I've realized it was like a side effect that I didn't even think about was me doing these Sunday vlogs so many of our church members even have commented because I'm going behind the scenes showing like the staff working, prayer times happening, the things going wrong on Sundays, the chaos that ensues that that the regular churchgoer has no idea that's even like has even happened. Hopefully, if we've done a good job, because <laughs> we don't want to bring bringing distractions. That's part of my job is to like eliminate distractions for people to worship. But just uncovering that little bit of a layer has been a side effect for our church even to be like, I never even knew that all those things are happening and an appreciation, I think, mm. for the way that we're serving the congregation and the sacrifices that are that are being made. And then they get to kind of see what's really happening. So I think it's refreshing. It's good. Yeah, I'm looking at your website right now. Uh, it's it's a CBC Owasso, right? Dot org. CBC Owasso dot org. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. It's, it's clean, it's simple. You're not, you get the clear, um, Call to action, or right there, right, right below the fold. Join us in person, nine thirty, eleven a.m. every Sunday. You'd be amazed the amount of websites I look at for churches. I'm like, you got to make it so whoever's visiting your site instantly, like within like a second, knows like, okay, where, when do you guys meet on Sunday? You know, and where do you meet? Right, the simple stuff. Um, some Absolutely. churches you have to like click, click five times and do this or whatever. Like, guys, or like, scroll no, all the way down the bottom. No wonder, and it's like in tiny font and yeah. No wonder nobody's coming uh, or nobody news coming. But yeah, this is because yeah, the website uh, is there for new people to your church. Really, that's who's going to use yeah. the website. I don't think most church members even ever go to your website, and so yeah, it's got to be up there. Even like what city we're in, because we're not the only central you know church around. There's lots bigger ones. Right. So to know like this is actually the church I'm looking for. Here's when they meet, and here's how I can be prepared I would, for my visit. Okay, you want to hear my critique? I'm going to grill your web design. I would change yeah, that. Yeah, let's do it. I see the made for more. That's the main call to action. If it's really, mm -hmm. if it's for the giving campaign, I would either, I would either put another button next to it that says like plan a visit or or uh, something like that, or just put the plan of visit buzzes where the plan of visit button where the made for more button is uh, because someone visiting, you know, make it so they don't even have to scroll down or be like, Hey, put maybe under your main headline. Uh, Welcome to central a church where Jesus changes everything. Um, join us Sundays at nine and web, whatever. Like you can even put like one more line there just so someone's not yep. going to scroll as far down. And then I would make the made for more thing. Okay. Like realistically, like, I don't know if you guys like, you know, if that's for insiders, I feel like that's a campaign where you could put maybe a tab on the top for people to navigate to. Um, but I feel like that's more like you're going to send that campaign to your like church email list of people who are already part of the church or something like that. But that's just Absolutely. my marketing. Yeah, that uh, button usually is like a plan of visit button, but we literally started our vision camp or our giving campaign this last Sunday. And so that was mm -hmm. requested to be uh, put there front and center. But and then we got Easter next Sunday. So that'll be getting changed back immediately. Oh, okay. But, okay. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's a good. huge undertaking that we're going to be doing. Uh, I found out that what I thought was going to be a phase two, like three years away remodel of our worship center is hopefully happening January of this next year. Whoa. So oh, dude, that's awesome. That changes a lot of things. <laughs> that's fast. <laughs> as far as planning. So we'll see. I mean, obviously it's based on, you know, however God leads people to give and, you know, how much things cost. Um, but do you, we'll do you know what too. integrator you're going to try to work with? I've got a few that I've, I've worked with before that I'm interested in talking more, but if you guys have suggestions, definitely, you know, let me know what you think. Um, I like some of the local guys here, DC pro, 
um, Integrity Lighting. Um, mm-hmm. We've got some other sound in church that we've worked with. Yeah, so I guess got you, you guys must have, yeah, locally, you just probably get so many folks around there that can do it. There's quite a few, you know, but I don't know. I've never done a thing of this magnitude and been in charge of it. So I don't know, like, should I pick one integrator that can do it all or should I specialize with different guys? Because I feel like most integrators say they can do everything, but a lot of times they're kind of outsourcing the video part. They're really mm-hmm. audio guys or, you know, vice versa. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. yeah, I do feel like, well, you have your big ones that I think do do it all pretty well. Like Summit does it well. Um, Amplio, I think they yeah. they all like those are like the two like premium, like, you know, head honcho integrator companies. Right. And then uh, Octane, I think they would do it well. And they're actually they sound like they have to be pretty selective on how many projects they can take on when I was talking to their founder um the other day but we we really liked our meyer yeah. pa they put in and um and i imagine i know drake drake does a lot of their video stuff drake kelch yeah the uh last last kind of question i have for you is more rapid fire what's uh seasonally is what's your easter list looking like your set list for sunday i'm, I'm curious as to what churches are doing on easter sunday it's going to be time stamped a little bit but i don't care Sure. Yeah. Easter Sunday for us, we are doing a giant opener scrim drop uh, moment that I've been planning for many years. But this is going to be different because I've seen a lot of scrim drops happen. You know what I'm talking about, where they'll drop the scrim and then the band's behind it. But ours is going to be all tied to the idea of the veil being torn. And so actually our theme for the Sunday is love unveiled. And so we're doing a big opener from uh, I think Brentwood actually came out with it. it has oh, praise the name and a bunch of like voiceover stuff happening with it that kind of leads to a climactic moment. Then everybody will join in worship. Uh, We're doing God So Loved and Forever, old school that we've done before. And Amazing Grace, just one verse for those people that are de-church that have no idea what these songs are that we're singing, at least the moment where they can join in and sing with a a familiar, you know, classic. And then we're also doing uh, baptisms on Easter Sunday and uh, then just a special message. And we'll we'll end with a reprise of glorious day, like a big happy moment there at the end of service, just like a minute and a half version of it. Sweet. That sounds super, super exciting. Looking forward to yeah, it's gonna be hearing fun. how that goes. Yeah. And then we have good Friday service right before that. So, um, you know, which is totally different. We do worship in the round and the cello and, you know, scaled back stuff and communion and all those things, which is a very good, you know, intimate moment with our, church fam so that that's always yeah. fun one of the quickest turnovers of all time is good friday sets to easter sets it's like the what is that like a 72 hour work week and three you know it's like three days and you work more than you ever have all year probably it's it's aside from the churches that do a christmas eve and christmas day service those i think there's less going on there but there's still a lot a lot of transitions so Rylan, what's yes. uh, what's the best place for people to connect with you online if they want to follow you leading up to the Churchfront Live conference? What's the Instagram handle, YouTube channel? Tell tell them where to find you. Sure. Well, it's just my name. It's Rylan Russell. I'm not cool like all these other guys that have great branding for uh, what they're doing. It's just my name everywhere. So RylanRussell.com, YouTube slash uh, Rylan Russell, all those things. Either that or I'm just really vain. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> good it's good and jake you wanted to give a quick shout out to when and where the conference is how people can get tickets what that looks like churchfrontlive.com in october 17th through 18th denver actually littleton colorado but you're going to fly into denver um and at this rate like we only can fit about 500 people in this space at south fellowship so it's not it's not a huge space and at the rate that tickets are selling now compared to last year we might like be full full so make sure you get a ticket uh before you come or before uh you know we fill up so, yeah. yeah and get it and get one before you come uh the sooner you buy the ticket the greater the discount uh so well as we're recording this this is actually the last day to get 30 percent off um but probably when this is released i think there's probably going to be another discount if you use early bird it's just not going to be as much as 30 percent. but use that uh, we have people from all over the country uh, signing up. So come. It's going to be two days. You'll be able to meet Rylan in person, hang out with the team. And uh, it's it's my highlight of the whole year. Last year was so fun when we did that. So yeah, um, it's a good time. I do it again. 
Love it. Well, Rylan, thanks for joining us on, on the pod and we'll look forward to seeing you in person in October. Absolutely. It's going to be awesome.